Okay, what is up everybody? So this video is basic data manipulation in R. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go over a few functions from two packages, dplyr and tidyr. These functions are functions that I use over and over and over again in my projects, so knowing them are going to be key to your success in following along with these projects. And this video is really here to serve as a reference so that I don't have to keep going over them within the actual projects themselves. Um, before we get started, I'll just mention that this is an advanced beginner video, meaning I'm assuming you have some working knowledge of R already. You should know what packages are, variables, functions, loops, um, how to work with and subset data frames. You don't need to be a master at these, but you, if this sounds foreign to you, if you've never heard these words, um, this might be a little bit too fast paced because I am really going to fire through these examples here um, just so you guys have a reference. So if you're an absolute beginner, I'm going to reference some videos in the description below but this is probably not the video for you. Um, but with that said, let's jump in and let's start by loading in dplyr. So we're gonna type library, dplyr, control enter. Um, so I'm gonna just type in down below here the functions that we're gonna be going over. So we're gonna be going over filter, select, mutate, oops, mutate, group, by and summarize. I'm running these on one line because these two functions go together. And left join. So these are the functions in dplyr we're going to go over. Uh, first, we need a data set. So within the dplyr package, there's a data set called Star Wars. Um, so let's load that into our global environment. Star Wars right there. Control Enter. Um, so now I'm going to show you, so a lot of these functions, the first two functions specifically, filter and select, deal with subsetting a data frame. So what I'm going to do is show you how we typically subset in base R, and then we'll all go into how I would do the same subsetting within dplyr. So I'm going to say in the comments, base R, and I'm going to say, actually, let's take a look at our Star Wars data set first. So this data set shows um, a bunch of characters within the Star Wars movies and a bunch of metadata about them, right? So your height, mass, your hair color, um, species, home world, and some other things. Um, so actually specifically what we're gonna show um, in the, the first set of subsetting is I'm gonna filter down, right, humans. Oh, and it's actually just human. So I'm going to filter this data set so that all of the rows are just human. And then I'm only going to select for columns, I'm going to select name, height, mass, um, home world, and species. So let's do that first in base R. And we will say, so let's say humans, base, or I say Star Wars, brackets, Star Wars again, spell. Species equals human. Right, and then we are going to say we're going to create a vector. We say name. We'll say species height, mass, home, and home world. I believe was the last one we said. We're going to take. Okay, so let's send that to the console. We now have our new data set. Right, you can see all of the humans, gotten rid of all the other species, and we've gotten rid of all of the other columns that aren't these five. So now how we would do, we would do that in dplyr, and we'll say humans dplyr, and we're going to say Star Wars. And now I'm going to introduce another function that I didn't list above. It's called the piping operator. You're going to click Control Shift M. That's going to give you this weird symbol. It's actually loaded into your workspace when you load in dplyr. So you load in dplyr, you get the piping symbol. And I'm going to type filter. So that's the first function that we're going over, filter. And I'm going to take, I'm going to type species equals human. Enter. And now humans dplyr, right? So now we've limited our data set to just humans. So just a real quick aside, what I'm doing with this piping feature is what it's doing is it's taking anything left of the pipe, 
Right, so right now we have Star Wars, and it's moving it to the first argument of anything right of the pipe. So that's all that's all it's doing. So that's all the piping function is, is it's just moving whatever is le left of the pipe into the first argument of whatever is right of the pipe. So that's a notation that you're going to see me use a lot. I'm going to go back to this notation. Again, that's control shift M to get that piping feature. And that's what this looks like. Now filter is going to give you, um, it's going to subset the rows. So we still need to subset the columns, which is the select function. And we're going to say name, species, height, mass, all world. Let's send that to the console. And now if we look at humans dplyr, Right, we can see now that we have the same conditions um, for the base R version of this data set. And I'll also mention another plus about using kind of the dplyr R or tidyverse notation versus the base R notation is that it's much, much, much cleaner to read. Right, so you can do you can do a you can do a hard um, return after every one of these pipes, and that just makes it very clean and easy to read. What gets confusing and what I notice a lot with kind of beginning coders is they just load up on statements like this, right? Star Wars dollar sign and then the, the name of the column. And this gets very unwieldy very quickly if you're trying to do any kind of complicated subsetting. Whereas if you do it in the dplyr world, right? Things are kept clean, they're kept simple. Um, it's, it's just a lot easier to read. It's also, you don't have to repeat the name of the data set, it just knows that you're in, in this data set. So I can just say species, I don't have to put it in quotes. Um, and in the select function, same thing. You can just put the name of the column and it'll just work. So the next function we're gonna do is mutate. What mutate is, it's it's actually creating another column in the data set. So in base R, we would say humans, base, dollar sign, um, and we'll say BMI, since we have height and mass, we'll say body mass index because we have the two variables to calculate that. It's hu okay, so we'll, we'll say humans base mass divided by humans base height divided by 100. And now we'll square that quantity, send that to console, human base now has BMI. Um, and how we would do that in the apply our world is again, we would do a piping function, we would say mutate, and we would say BMI equals mass divided by height over 100 to the quantity squared. Okay, and now our humans dplyr also has BMI. So the next function we're going to go over is group by and summarize. So this is sort of like a pivot table within Excel, if you're familiar with that. Uh, basically what we're going to do is, oh, and let me get rid of this filter. Basically what we're going to do is we can group by a specific column and then we can summarize another column. So what we're going to do is if we group by species, we're going to get a data frame with one entry for each species, right? So here we can see since this is a data set of names, right? You can have multiple droids, right? But within the new data set, we're only going to have one line item for, for each species. So we'll have one line item per droid. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the average height for droids. And it's gonna do that for every species. So I'll kind of give you an example and hopefully it'll be clear. So we will say species, actually let's capitalize this species. And we'll start with our Star Wars data set. And we're gonna use a piping operator. We'll say group by species. And then we're gonna say summarize. And we will say average. So now we're creating a new column, average height. Say equals. And we'll say mean of height. And there's a couple of NAs in here, right? Just all around. There's a bunch of NAs. 
So to make sure this function doesn't fail, we'll just say na.rm equals t, and we'll send that to the console. And now if we open up our species data frame, we can see each row is one species, and we now have the average height for that species. So now the, the next function is left join. So this is how we can combine two data frames. So right now we're going to combine the species and the Star Wars data set. So say we wanted to know if Luke Skywalker was above average height for humans. So if we go to the species, we can see that humans have an average height of 176 centimeters and whoop, where am I? And Luke Skywalker is 172 centimeters. So he is shorter than the average human according to to this. I, I don't think that's right. I think Mark Hamill is probably a little bit taller than the average the average human, but uh, for this data set, we'll just we'll take that we'll take that as canon, and we'll go with it. So what this next function is going to do, it's it's called left join, and it is going to match up the species columns from both of these data sets, and it is going to say it is going to look up where the species is equal, right? So it's going to say human. And it is going to look on, on this data table and it is going to say human. And it's going to bring in this value. And it's going to do that for every entry on the Star Wars data set. So let's run that out and see what that looks like. So we will say Star Wars. The Star Wars. We're going to say left join. And so we're going to be, what this is saying is we're going to start with the Star Wars data set. And we're going to join onto it the species data set. And we're going to do that by species, species equals species. And we're going to send that to the console. And I got something wrong. Oh, because this by needs an equal sign. Okay, so now that worked. And if we go back to our Star Wars data set, and we scroll all the way to the right, we can see that the average height by species was brought in to this data table. All right, so, so far so good. So now if I actually, let's just finish this up for dplyr. If I actually wanted to um, calculate whether or not each character is tall or short based off of their species average height, I could do something like this. Um, I would use a mutate function, and I would say is tall. Let's actually break this up a little bit. So it looks kind of like what we did before. So we'll say is tall equals if else. So height, height is greater than average height. If that's true, we'll say tall. If it's false, we will say short. We will send that to the console. Let's take a look at our data set. Okay, and so now you can see it, in this instance, so this is Luke Skywalker, we already said that he was shorter than the average height. So the average height for humans is 176. His height is 172. So now we can see that Luke Skywalker is short. Um, and we could we could further subset this column based off of the where we could further subset this data frame based off of this column if we wanted to. Um, so now I'm going to go into tidy. So we're going to say library tidy r enter and there's two functions that I, I specifically want to go over um, in this package and it's spread and gather. So before I talk about each of these, let's load in a new data set. So we'll say population equals tidy r population. Okay, and so what these two functions do is actually let's open up this data frame. Is the spread function is going to take what what is called long data. So this is called long data because it's Right, it has three columns and it has a ton of rows. So the reason it's long is because it has one entry for each country and each year combination um, for, for population. So it has a unique value for population and it has multiple values for each country 
and it has multiple values for each year, right? But it only has one value for each country year combination. Um, and so what, the, what, what I use a lot in Tidy is to reshape these data frames. So if we want just one, each country to just have one entry on the rows and each year, right? So we have 95 to it looks like 2013 each year to be its own column. Um, we would use the spread function. So I'm going to say population wide. So let's give a space here just to make this a little more readable. Equals population. And we'll use piping. And we'll say spread. And we're going to say key equals. Okay, so we're going to say key equals year value equals population and enter now we have population wide right and we have one entry for each country in the rows and we have the years in the column and then we have the population filling in the actual values so now if we wanted to bring this data set back to long format we'll use the gather function so what i mean by that is we're going to take the year and we are going to match it up so for Afghanistan we're gonna have one entry for 1995 we're gonna have Afghanistan 1996 1997 and the population for each year so it's gonna bring us back to this original data set so what that looks like is population long equals and we'll start with population wide wide we'll say gather and we're going to say key equals and now this is going to be the name of your new column with the years so we'll say years just to differentiate from the original data frame we'll say years no no and then we'll say value equals population no and now we're going to say negative sign country which means that we're going to collapse the years column over the country column, right? So what that looks like is, right, we still want this country column in the rows. That's why we're using that negative sign on country. Um, the key is what we're gonna rename the column headers, right? So everything but country, since we were excluding country, we're taking all of these columns and we're putting them into a new column called years new and then it's also going to create a new column called population new where the population will lie so let's execute that code it's population long okay so now your years new we have population new so we're back into our long format so this data frame is looking identical to the original data frame except the column titles are a little bit different okay guys so that's it for the tidy r package um, there's a lot more to it but that's all we're going to touch in this video and it might be hard to tell why this is useful um, but as you do more projects in order to realize that certain algorithms and certain charting functions only work if, it, if the data is either in a long or a wide format and we'll see that more and more as we get into the projects. But that's it for this video. Um, again, by no means, even with DeepIR, this is by no means an exclusive, an exhaustive list of functions that we'll be using. Um, we'll, we'll be getting into more of the functions in both of these packages and more of the packages in the tidyverse within the projects themselves but this will help so that i don't have to stop and pause and explain each one of these functions because i do use them a lot in my videos so i hope you found this instructive um, remember to subscribe and go and check out those projects on my channel and see how these functions can be applied to real world problems thanks everybody